Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This time it's going to be Randy versus Cube on Vitra, which is a fairly straightforward map. All things considered, it's quite small. It does have a decent amount of metal. Three or two, three, I guess triangle patches. I think it's a way of putting this. This is basically the main base formations, the opening triangle like this. So three of those, or two of those rather, and otherwise a relatively even spread. Although this low ground section to point out is actually vehicle unpathable, only bot pathable. It's a subtle thing, but it is worth pointing out. Vehicles cannot go into there. Everything else, however, basically there are these cliffs. They are, I think, only bot pathable. I think they are bot pathable. Double check. They are. They are indeed bot pathable. Just slows them down. Also, a lot of ramps in the middle. So this is a decent. This is a decent map for bots. Not a good map for vehicles. And we have Jump Jet Plant from Randy, Cube going for Shield Bots. So good choices on this map, although Jump Jet might be an odd choice. This map probably doesn't favor Jump Jet too much. There are a couple hilly areas and a couple ways of basically speeding the descent or ascent dealing with hills, but otherwise not a whole lot is affected by going for Jump Bots, to be honest. Anyway, Pyro coming in here, opening scouting moves, Cube does see that pyro and QA does see a lot of wind generators getting rid of most of them and able to deal quite a lot of damage with this bandit that's a very nice harassment there At the same time this pyro coming for randy is gonna be able to basically return the favor though it looks like it's only gonna be able to kill one wind gen before dying while this bandit able to well gets killed by the defender ultimately but he will get pretty far before that happens well like i said the pyro does get away the pyro escapes with 34 health Killing off a bandit and a wind generator, so Cube starting out ahead in the opening scout and raid. Randy able to rebuild pretty quickly, and Cube, however, does have an advantage. He does have six, well, just about getting six metal extractors to Randy's three. Randy does have this pyre off in the corner. It will be, it won't be healing up, but it will just be standing around. Cube unlikely to look at this section of the map, so Randy's pyro is likely to be safe from this point on. Now, Cube on the other hand, does have a shield bot factory going for more bandit production. And looks like he is, well, six bandits so far, or seven. He's probably going to be on the defensive for a little bit longer, given the jump bot factory. However, this wouldn't be a bad time to attack. The only problem is he knows he hasn't killed the pyro. He can't just let it go like that. It's not easy. He can't just do that. He has to be more careful. And yeah, he does know about all this stuff here. He doesn't know what Randy has developed in the meantime. Doesn't know about this eastern side. He can probably assume. No, he's moving out. His bandits are moving out. Randy is probably going to counterattack with a pyro once he sees the bandits have moved out. Convict in the back, getting a bandit, and does ha he does have a lotus. This will help against the pyro. Actually, against this pyro, this particular pyro, given that it's at pretty low health, and it is healing up. Never mind, it is self healing. But it's still probably going to be countered pretty well by these two lotuses. It'll be a matter of positioning, and Randy is going to be actually pretty keen on that. So I think. We'll see what happens once Randy finds out what's going on. He does see Cubay's forces get rid of the bandit right away with a one puppy. A few more puppies in back to help defend. And more pyro is being built behind that. This pyro has not yet been moved, so Randy is still biding his time on that one. Assuming he's remembered it, but I assume he remembers it. And he is going to be engaging this pyro. Retreating away from the bandits. Pulling the bandits into the defender. Into the defender. That's tower's going to say, but into the defender. And that... It's not something Cube is going to fall for too long, although Cube now just attacking directly. The Defender is exhausted for missiles, and the Bandits should be able to tear it apart pretty quickly. The Pyro is coming in to deal with them, however, and they will not last. So Cube does see more of Randy's base, and Randy going for that counterattack. Coming in with the Pyro around the side, and at the same time pushing back Cube's forces. Cube's Bandits out of position, but he does see that Pyro just in time. Able to defend against it with the Defender, and the Lotus should be able to finish it off. The Bandits won't even have a chance to get back there. The Lotus will be the one to finish it off. It gets rid of a wind generator, but not the biggest deal. However, Cube is getting pushed back with the bandits. So unable to deal any meaningful damage. Got rid of a defender, but that's about it. So Randy and Cube right now are pretty even. Cube has four metal advantage on Randy. Though Randy does have the reclaim of the bandits, so it's gonna even out pretty much immediately. And Randy's continuing to expand as well, so it's a fairly even match right now. Very much neck and neck. Randy has a slightly larger army, but slightly weaker economy, so it's pretty well balanced. However, Felon coming in right away. No thugs, no a few convicts, but basically no support on the Felon. Cube is going for an interesting little strategy here. I think he might be going for Felon Convict Ball. Not even bothering with 
felon thug, just felon convict, probably using the convicts to repair the felon as it attacks. Not a bad idea, but I still think them thugs would be useful as secondary support. And Randy coming in with more pyros. He's going to try to break through Cubay's lines. Cubay does have his bandits in position. He does know that it's coming. And he is going to be able to probably defend against this pretty well. Already killing off one of the pyros thanks to Defender. The bandit's going for a nice surround. That either was a flank attempt or just an avoidance. He's trying to avoid Cubay's forces. Randy was trying to get around the bandits. Able to kill three of them, though, for the cost of one pyro. So, not the most effective thing, but still not ineffective at all. And gets rid of Randy, gets rid of Cubay's radar, but the Felon is up. Felon is up, he's gonna get rid of the Pyro, no problem. Convict will go down, unfortunately, for it, but still not the biggest problem. Still a bit of a problem. The Cubay has a bunch of Convicts coming up. Convicts and Felons, it might just be going for Felon, pure Felon Ball. That's it, just a bunch of Felons pushing with that. See if Randy goes for heavy forces from this. Try to deal with this. He's getting for Scuttles, which that will help. But let's see, what is Scuttle Health? No, no, not that. Scuttle Health is 250. That will not be that useful. Though its explosion is very large, so it should be fine at actually killing off the felon if it gets close enough. It's the getting close enough part that's gonna be a problem. The Pyros should provide adequate distraction if they're combined. Randy getting an air factory as well. No Q yet. So not quite sure what he's going to be doing. QB, on the other hand, focusing entirely on pushing out felons. Like I said, once again, surprised he's not going for thugs, but he is getting a lot of convicts. Looks like he is going for a con... Okay, he is doing a convict felon ball. That's exactly what he's up to. And the convicts are set to guard, so they are going to repair. This is exactly what I expected he's going to do, so that is a nice little setup. However, Randy expanding on the east side of the map. QB is starting to push on the west, but there is going to be a bit of a line cross here. This is no man's land, and Cubay is about to walk right into it. On the other hand, Randy taking this east side. Does Cubay even know about this? I do not know. Cubay does not. He knows about the west side pretty well. He has radar coverage of that. But he doesn't know about this. One of the scuttles does go off, and really the felons know worse than the wearer as a result. But Cubay continuing to build some. Well, getting some lotuses along the way, going for a bit of a hard push here. He's not aware of this east side expansion, though. That's going to be a. Small problem, nothing huge. Randy doesn't have any production on here. He does have a metal extractor or two. Worth getting rid of if he can find it, but at this point, go for the main base. Sh Ravens are coming up. Three have already been built, and they are going to go straight for the Felon, and that Felon going to die as a result of this. That Felon goes down, and this is why I said additional support, thugs or something. The second Felon was only halfway along its way to that base. And these convicts trying to... Have to move back. One of the Lotuses goes down thanks to a Raven. The other Lotus is going to go down to the Pyros. Not before killing one, mind you, but still goes down. Not the most effective strategy there. That being said, another Felon is in play, and further Felons are being built. I'm just surprised Cubay is going so heavily for the Felon strategy here. Once again, going down to Ravens. I mean, there's enough Ravens. There are four Ravens in the map right now. Randy might go for a comp snipe pretty soon, but he can definitely Felon snipe without issues. And Vandals, probably not the best bet here. Randy, over is switching to Vandals. Sorry, QB is switching to Vandals regardless. If he gets enough of them, they will work. Vandals, the problem with them is they don't deal a huge amount of damage individually. But they are very tough. And they aren't the most expensive. So, well, it's, it takes a while for them to pay back for themselves. They would be able to get rid of these Ravens without too much issue. Though, now QB has found the commander, is able to get rid of some of the defenses around it. And will either send Pyros there or just attack directly. Although... Never mind, the Pyros haven't been destroyed by the Felon. That's not going to happen. But the Ravens know exactly where it is. We'll probably come some pretty soon, especially since Cubay is going for a support com. That'll take only about four Ravens, of which Randy has seven. Well, six and one in production. But still, Randy is full for Ravens. On the other hand, Cubay still got his Felons. Still has just the one Felon up here. He had more coming, but the Vandals replaced that in production. Cubay out of power, though, to point out, he is, his energy load for the shields is just way too much for his current power grid. Needs to build more power plants, getting a lot of wind generators in the back, so that is working out. But he does need to get the quantity. He is building up, but that's only one and a half power at a time. So he, he needs quite a bit more in order to power all these shields. And that being said, he's able to push back pretty well. And this Raven, not able to get rid of Cubay's commander, not even able to touch it. Defenders have taken it out, they have to retreat. However, they are going to go for this Felon. Once again, another Felon goes down. Two Ravens. 
Though nice use of defense, I mean, okay, not so much nice use of defenders, it's rather excessive use of defenders, but hey, it works with the Vandals as well, so it looks like a couple of the Ravens have gone down. Yes, two, three Ravens go down. Not a bad, not a bad defense there, actually. Did lose the Felon, but ultimately didn't lose much else, and managed to kill three Ravens in the process. Now, given that the Felon cost is, it's 620 metal, that was actually cost effective. Not sure if Cubay was going for a bait there, if that was exactly what he was hoping for. But hey, it does work. That being said, there is a counterattack coming here with the Pyros. That will get rid of the Vandals, no problem. Though the Lotuses and Defenders are going to be too much to deal with. Jack coming in here, and that will be able to break through this line. The Jack will not be stopped by all this. It does not care. It just moves in, and it pokes. It pokes everything to death. Or stabs. It goes in and stabs. That's what the Jack does. That is his job, and it does it very well. Getting rid of all the Lotuses, forcing QA to be pushed back. And it will get rid of the Defenders without any issue. In fact, it's tanking all the shots of the Defenders. The Pyros can just walk in directly. And that will be a much faster way of getting rid of all these Defenders. Getting rid of all the Convicts, too. But down go the Defenders. Down goes Cubay's defense line. At the cost of a few Pyros, though. But still, the f center of the map is open up. Randy has taken it. Taken a Geothermal Plant as well. So Randy's going to be very much ahead in power production. Cubay going for a bit of counter-harassment. I think he's aware of this here. Let's see. He is... Maybe barely aware of this. He is now aware of it. Okay, he's now become aware of what's going on the east side of the map. Otherwise, though, not very. He doesn't actually know of anything here. He's not scouted it out. He knows there's something. He knows the defenders, at any rate. But he doesn't have anything scouting out. He has nothing attacking it. And more Pyros and Jacks coming in. So Randy pushing very hard against this Felon strategy. I don't... I don't know what QA is planning on doing at this point. More Convicts, more Felons... He does have, actually, quite a lot of power being pushed into that Felon, thanks to the Convicts. But even then, it's not enough. The Jack able to get in. Jack should be pretty low on health. No, the Jack's going to die. This Jack has gone down, and the Felon getting more Convict support, and the Convicts, like I said, are continuously repairing it. Actually, they're continuously reclaiming more at this point. But they can repair the Felon if need be. They are right there. That is definitely a thing they can do, and that is... Maybe a thing they'll do in time. That's the question. That Pyro could go back. Those Pyros could all go back and kill the Felon. They aren't doing so. Randy is retreating, probably wisely, but he does have Ravens he could use to deal with that felon instead. So at this point, map control is primarily... Well, Cuba is a bit more concentrated. Randy has this east side, and he could start to assault the northeast, but it'd be a bit of a tough fight. The center, however, is Cuba's, which means Randy has a bit of a flank on him. Cuba is starting to take out a lot of this. There is one metal extractor in the center, so it's not that worthwhile overall economically. He's taken all the reclaim as well, so there's not much Cubay can do. Cubay, in fact, once again, he is down on energy. He needs to build more power plants. That has been his weakness this entire game, thanks to all these shields just draining his energy. Though it doesn't mention how much, but yeah, he's... He is low on energy. Much lower than it should be for the production. And Firewalker being built as well to help deal with this felon convict ball. Though admittedly, the fire does... Actually, the fire is just perfectly useful, because it will get through the shields. No, I mean, it won't get through the shields with the actual shot, but I'm pretty sure the burning effect does. Yeah, how much has seen a lot of firewalk usage? I'm I'm glad to see that. I like seeing that. It's, it is definitely an imposing unit. It's not one you see a whole lot, but it is one that deals a lot of damage when it comes up. And now, there we go. Cubay has now seen this. He now knows what's going on, or at least partially. Able to... S okay, yeah, he knows exactly what's going on. See, he's... All his power plants, all the melee strategies. Sees the gets rid of the geothermal. Nice shot there, getting rid of that. Randy has to retreat his commander and loses his entire east side. So Randy now falling back on map control. The felon ball starting to pay off. Felon ball with convicts. That actually is seeming to work. Just the sheer number of. Oops. I guess they paused for a second. Yeah, the sheer number of felons and convicts. That's just making this enough shield energy that the felons can just keep going. And a few bandits and rogues just to clean up while Geothermal Plant being reclaimed by Cubay's convicts there. Another felon does go down, but it doesn't even matter. Cubay's just taken back all the stuff. He needs to build... He needs more caretakers. That's what he needs right now. He's He is floating metal. He needs more caretakers in his base. He needs to just build more stuff. You know, there's a lot of convicts to do so, but most of them are on the front lines helping the felon out. So not quite the most useful position, but they are taking on the east side as well, so Cubay making a very hard push along the east side of the map. 
taking out a lot of what Randy has. Most of what Randy has, really. Randy going for a sumo counter, though. That is the best option. Absolute best option is the sumo. Wants to do that because the sumo is a 12,000 health unit. It doesn't matter how many convicts that felon has with it, it is not going to work. It is going to run out of shield energy, especially right now since there's no convicts next to it, so that doesn't help at all. But yeah, it is going to run out of shield energy and won't be able to do... It won't be able to deal with a small fraction of the health. That felon needs to move back, though unfortunately there, for Randy, there are a bunch of rogues and defenders around, but he does have the pyros coming in, sacrificing themselves to get rid of the defenders, but still able to do so. And that sumo is taking a lot of damage. But it doesn't matter. That sumo, even though it's at two-thirds health, that's still 8,000 health. That is a lot of health. And just crushing, just walking over those, crushing all of those convicts in the way. So yeah, sumo not to be trifled with. And another sumo is likely, once that one dies, assuming it does die, and it looks like it is taking a decent amount of damage, down to half health. Has forced Kyubei back, but even then, Kyubei still actually is not, not falling back too far. His convicts are still alive, although admittedly they're going to be dead pretty soon, but they're doing a nice reclaim on everything that Randy had. Just eating everything up, as Kyubei is wont to talk about. He likes to eat things. But admittedly he hasn't done the whole munch munch crunch crunch chat message in a while. But still, that usually happens when his commander dies, and his commander is... Well, his commander is nowhere near death. In fact, his commander is well off the front lines. Randy's, on the other hand, is right at the front lines. Beam laser and trying to repair that sumo, but that sumo is a lost cause if it doesn't retreat outright. In fact, Randy's commander taking a lot of damage in the meantime. It's about to go down, jumps away, just barely avoids this, but nope. On the way down, does go down, and there goes Randy's commander. His economy now about half of Cubase. It's quite a turnaround. I mean, Randy had managed to get rid of Cubase's center position, but Cubase completely pushes back, getting rid of the east side, getting rid of the southeast, and then ultimately will be able to push in through the southeast side. Possibly even just directly forward. The sumo is almost dead. Commander is dead. A bunch of pyros coming in to try to deal with all these rogues, but the rogues pretty much hard counter them. Pyros cannot close the distance quickly enough. I'm a bit surprised no moderators have been built, mind you. Moderators would help quite a bit in this situation. Jax would help somewhat too. The firewalker was a good choice. It still is, actually. Though it's not in the best position. And the ravens, those are definitely a good choice. They will help out a lot. They can easily get to the rogues and pretty much undefended. Pyro's trying to move in to deal a bit more damage to the rogues. Once again, move back. The Pyro's cannot get in position. I am surprised Randy continues to push out more and more Pyro's. He is getting some Freakers, but no Moderators. He needs to get more... Moderators are possible... Well, okay. Some of the Pyro's getting lucky, but ultimately it's not going to work out too well. Cubay is just hard countering it. The Ravens are doing a good job, though. That's what they need to do. Get rid of those rogues. Get rid of all the rogues. Push back Cubay at the same time. Cubay is starting to attack, starting to be attacked along the west side. The Firewalker going along here, trying to get rid of Cubay's expansion. And it looks like Randy is dimly aware of this. He knows that there are a lot of defenders here. He knows there's a nest. He does know there is an enemy unit. He doesn't know what it is. So he's a little bit in the dark. But he can reasonably assume that Cubay has taken the west side of the map pretty strongly. The Firewalker is the best choice here. The Ravens will probably go in here. Actually, he did, he did scout out with the Ravens earlier. That's right. He did see the Cubay's commander was here. So QB under a bit of attack, but he has map control by far. He is... I mean, Randy has a little defensive position in his base, but that's about it. He is trying to push back. The Ravens are doing a pretty good job here, but even then, QB has four caretakers... Five caretakers pushing into his factory. He can just... He can take the reclaim and make that work for him. He is solid for economy right now. And despite his earlier power troubles, he has a fusion plant. He is... He is fine. Randy, on the other hand, running out of metal. His 20 metal has... Quite a bit of power, but he's not really overdriving all that much. A bit, but not enough to make up for Cubay's map control lead. The Raven's doing a decent job, but enough Vandals are being built at this point. There are... Well, okay, there are 10 Vandals now. But that is actually doing a... That's enough, in the looks of it. For at least one Raven at a time. The Ravens do get off their target, but they do die in the process. Another Raven goes down. Randy losing more and more Ravens at this point. I think he only has two. Yes, that's right, he only has two, and these Vandals are just fine. Puppy's coming in, however, that is actually a really good choice. Because the puppy can take the reclaim fields on its own to reproduce more puppies, that's definitely an easy way for Randy to get in, get these reclaim fields to work for him rather than having to risk his builders. Downside, of course, being that they can be attacked at range effectively, as we just saw, which makes them considerably less useful, at least against the Lotuses. 
That being said, it looks like Pyros are the order of the day. Randy has not changed that strategy whatsoever this entire game. And QB coming in with enough bandits that it won't matter. It won't matter the Pyro basically hard counters, or doesn't hard counter, but it does a pretty good job against bandits. Nope, these bandits are just too much. Pyros are going to go down. The bandits continue to move in. More bandits coming in, and Ravens will try to deal with them. Doing a decent job, and actually, between the bandits and the Pyros, it's doing okay. -ish. Well, sorry, between the Ravens and the Pyros, is doing okay for getting rid of Cubay's forces, but even then, Cubay is still just pushing in. The Rogue's coming in, getting rid of Radar Tower. The Firewalker in a safe spot. It, continued to, it continues to attack with impunity, but even then, it can only do so much. There's only one of it. It can only deal so much damage. Sumo getting repaired pretty heavily. Still only at a quarter health. Gonna move out at a quarter health regardless, and will probably die. The rogues coming in along the east side. There's everything. Rogues along the west. Rogues on the east. Rogues coming from the north. And a bandit army can be rebuilt at a moment's notice. With an airplane plant, just in case, there's a bunch of phoenixes coming up. Five phoenixes are going to be coming up. That'll probably be used to torch this entire wind farm, which I think Cubay knows about. And no, he doesn't actually. Cubay does not have any knowledge of that. He's entirely in the dark, but he's going to scout around here. Probably just burn up the base. The main base, the caretaker is the factory. He knows about this stuff. Destroy all that. Randy doesn't know that he has air coming up, so no real counters in place, which is a bit of a shame because the Archangel, the jump jet anti-air unit, is extremely powerful against air. It is a very scary anti-air unit, but unfortunately, not in play. And two Phoenixes are coming up. QB might wait until the 5th, or he might attack now, but I think he's going to wait until the 5th. does have these last two coming in and a couple of Ravens on top of that. On the other hand, Randy has not rebuilt his Ravens, which kind of makes sense, though admittedly his Ravens are... Really his best bet, honestly. I'm a bit surprised he hasn't built more of them. He needs ground army, obviously, to defend somewhat, but the Ravens have been doing probably the best job actually tearing apart these rogues. Because he does need to get rid of them. The Pyro's doing an okay job if they can jump in, but afterwards, it's tough. The rogues can tear them apart from the distance, and there come the Phoenixes! And Cubay does end up seeing the wind farm. A bit too late, though. He is able to burn up actually quite a lot of the wind farm. There we go. Nice Phoenix movement there. Nice micro on that, and a few more Phoenixes coming in to get rid of the rest of the wind farm. Getting rid of Randy's economy, down to 8 and 15, compared to Cubay's 62 and 100 something. Cubay is well in the lead. There's not much Randy can do other than surrender. Cubay has nearly double the economy by cost. Or sorry, army by cost, and a lot of that cost is sumo. Yep, there we go. Randy throws in the towel. That is game, and that was a very exciting game. Thank you, Randy, for uploading that and uploading the other one as well. And thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. That is going to be it for me tonight. But before I go, reminder, the Saturday cast, it is going to be at 2 a.m. PST at 9 a.m. UTC. Or 9 hours, 900 hours, I don't know. 9 a.m. UTC. It is going to start then. It's 1v1, single elimination, so it'll probably last about 3 to 5 hours. It is not going to be at 1 p.m. PST or 8 p.m. P 8 p.m. UTC because that doesn't work out super well for the European Australian players and I don't think there's any North American players in the tournament. I'm the only person from North America that's actually participating at all as far as I know. I believe Norm616 well he opted out and I don't believe there's any other North American players that are planning to join in so that is the timing. So yeah it's going to be morning in Europe, it's going to be evening in Australia, it's going to be if you're in North America I apologize. It'll You'll, unless you want to stay up late like I will, well, or go to sleep and then wake up at midnight and then do it. Anyway, that's when it's going to be, earlier than usual. So, this is it for me tonight. Hopefully see you all on Saturday, May 24th at 2 a.m. PST, 9 a.m. UTC, for the monthly 1v1 tournament for May. And once again, thank you for watching and have a good night.